to be nurses, but are no longer doing the jobs that they want to do and that they love because the working conditions in hospitals are often deplorable. And how sad it is, how tragic it is that these nurses who want to do their jobs, compelled to do their jobs, no longer feel. Continue. It is going to be worth knowing who will receive their money in the first days of June. SSI recipients are eligible for a maximum benefit of $1,000 a month and $1,300 for a married couple, where both spouses are eligible for the program. But it's important to mention that the payments are calculated individually and vary from one beneficiary to another. SSI recipients receive their payments on the first day of each month, or if the first day falls on a weekend or holiday. The payment is moving forward to the earliest business days of the previous month, and those who begin receiving their Social Security payments before the month can receive benefits every single time. So folks, just know this. Based on the scheduling, the SSI recipients will receive their June payment on June 1st. In addition to that, SSA will send a second payment on June 30th, which corresponds to the July check, since the first day of that month is Saturday, and the payment date will be brought forward. But if the U.S. breaches the debt ceiling and defaults on its debt, there could be significant implications for Social Security beneficiaries. The debt ceiling represents the max amount of money the U.S. government can borrow, and if it's not raised or eliminated, the government may not have enough funds to meet its financial obligations, including Social Security payments. Experts warned that in such a that as we gather here right now on the floor, uh, we have legislation uh, that Maine sent out its Maine sent out its initial wave of five thousand dollars checks and three dollars each on June first, and intends to send two hundred thousand dollars two hundred thousand checks per week in the future. According to the Maine governor, the state stimulus was signed to law as part of the state's budget surplus in late April. Uh, I now yield myself 10 minutes, and thank you all for your patience. Uh, I'm the last uh, questioner, so we'll get out of here. Um, Ms. Bobert uh, mentioned this is uh, Donald Trump's birthday and wished him a happy birthday. I want to acknowledge that today is National Bourbon Day, and coming from Kentucky, I think that's an important thing to say to get on the, on the record, and I will be celebrating appropriately uh, later in the day. Uh, Mr. Mr. Williams, I get Mayor Williams, thanks for, for being here, and you are more than the, the mayor of Union City. You are representing the League of Cities across the country. Um, how many of the mayors that you're familiar with um, think the American Rescue Plan was a bad deal? I know no mayors. Uh, they think the American Rescue Plan was a bad deal. And that's Republicans, Democrats, that's and non Republicans and, non and Democrats. Uh, we are a nonpartisan organization. Uh, so I have no mayors that have reached out and said, I think this is a bad deal because we worked in concert with uh, a lot of your uh, uh, committee members and, and certainly with uh, the Biden administration to craft this legislation to make sure that cities did get direct funding. And one of the complaints about the CARES Act was that there was not enough flexibility uh, offered that the guidelines were too strict. And therefore, when we were crafting this legislation, that's what we wanted to do was to give the cities and states and counties uh, more flexibility in the use. With the families of the hostages, it brought depravity to a new low against civilization. It just shocks you to see what they did to people and what they're continuing to do. We were resolved to help Israel. That feeling is even deeper today as a result of our visit. Israel has a right and obligation to defend itself. Big news has been announced and there are new proposals currently on the table. It would make a dramatic positive impact for the Social Security people. Joe Biden is making a big decision on this in order to try to avoid Social Security cuts for all recipients. Top senators for both parties are working to save Social Security benefits. Everyone in D.C. knows that Social Security is in trouble. They only have to listen to the federal government and the program's trustees. In the latest report, the trustees projected that Social Security's combined trust funds is already running out of money. And by 2034, the program's done. But some in Washington are working on solutions to prevent the program from becoming insolvent. One of them 
Senate Republican Bill Cassidy recently revealed what he called a big idea in a webcast hosted by the Bipartisan Policy Center that could roughly save 75% of the program's projected shortfall. The proposal is to create an investment fund that's completely separate from Social Security's current trust funds. This new investment fund would invest money in the stock market, where uh, Social Security trust funds currently put money in treasury bills or cash. Now, what I mean is that he called Social Security's current approach the Silicon Valley Bank of Pension Funds, a reference to the failed bank that was acquired by the First Citizens Bank. He argued that this federal program is the worst investment strategy you can have right now. The separate fund isn't really a new idea, though, because he pointed to other funds, including the Canada Plan and Ontario Pensions Plan for Teachers, that were in bad shape financially but became solvent by using a market-based strategy. There are some details remaining to be worked out. For instance, some people think the proposed plan will be a gap stop to guarantee that if the winner loses money, if the stock market underperforms. Cassie said the participation is now needed from both Democratic and Republican leaders to take action for Social Security. Even though the President and Congress have limited options for preserving Social Security, they can either raise additional money, reduce benefits, or do both. Because President Biden has been adamantly against any reduction in benefits, even Senator Cassidy said that it's not right to do that. Steep benefit cuts. Since we ran late, she had to go somewhere else. So we just had a very productive lunch as we lay out the next few weeks. Negotiations for the year-long omnibus continue forward. Though we're working tirelessly, we need a bit more time beyond this week to get an omnibus done, avoid a needless shutdown. That said, the Senate should be prepared to pass a one-week CR this week and give negotiators more time to finish up. Now, this is a great idea, folks, and it will help people out with stimulus checks. So I definitely believe that it's going to be great if Joe Biden can get this out. We have attended views with the fourth stimulus check, Social Security Benefits, SI, and SDI. Continue watching this video because you don't want to miss out on this. Much relief is here, and the lawmakers in the House and the Senate are ready to close in on a deal that's going to give you stimulus checks every single month. It will help those of you on SSI and Social Security. It will help those of you on low income and even um, if you're not in need of a stimulus check, this bill will help you out still. So Kevin McCarthy is accelerating the long stalled push for a unified House GOP strategy in Washington's high stakes debt in Washington's high stakes debt ceiling stand. His opening offer on a debt limit is riddled with potential political pitfalls, including an expiration date that would tee up another high-stakes fiscal fight just before the presidential election. Kevin McCarthy plans to present a menu of debt limit options in person when Congress returns. This includes several types of massive spending cuts, stricter rules for the government's social programs, and new energy policies. The LCGOP has a limited time to come together with only four votes to spare, as an eyes vote by late May. The party's list of potential demands, which also includes an across-the-board cut to discretionary spending and strict work requirements like food stamps, is likely to change as the House Republicans hash out a former bill in the coming weeks. They are also proposing to raise the debt limit for just one year, triggering another battle over the federal purse in the middle of the presidential primaries. This includes two months of discussion with six to ten lawmakers at a time. The stakes couldn't be higher for Kevin McCarthy. This Republican must avoid a misstep that would weaken his speakership, which any single frustrated member could voice a vote to terminate. And unlike other GOP items which satisfy the party base, there are slim chances of any becoming law. Any debt ceiling limit is disliked by the Republican Party. Now, the New Mexico governor has recently announced a bill that the state will be sending out the newest round of $500 rebates in mid-June. The state tax